What is going on, people? Welcome to Throw Down Your Questions, episode 319. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I am joined by Emilio Lopez. What's up, people? How's it going? Chris Seeley. Hey, what's up, everyone? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Brett Murdoch. What up? And Brian Monjoma. Keep holding, guys. Keep holding. Keep <laughs> those hands diamond. Oh, man. Don't sell yet, man. Hold the line. All that shit. Um, Adam will uh, join us uh, soon. He's watching the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. The Royal Rumble. Ooh, I'm dapping dead. <laughs> <laughs> Macho Man came back to life. Undertaker, unretired. Hulk Hogan came back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, we don't have, have anything to say here, so we're going to jump right into the questions, baby. Into these questions by the fans. All right. Logic wins with the first question of the night. All right. Given the stellar February 2021 PS Plus lineup, more gamers will gravitate towards digital services. Do you believe Game Pass and PS Plus contribute to the death of physical media? Interesting question. What Probably. Yeah. My I mean, thing it, is, it was, it was Netflix, it did, with, it did with CDs, it did with DVDs. I mean, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, I don't think Game Pass and PS Plus are contributing. They're just part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, we're already going down this specific trajectory anyway of digital gaming yeah. anyway. So it, it's like Game Pass and PS Plus are like kind of like drops in a river, you know, at this yeah. point. Well, it, it's more it, it's more like the progression, like the s live services and things like that is the progression of everything else. If you think about it, all the physical media, like I, I would buy for... for PS4 and, and PS5, like I have Demon Souls on disc. It's it's just a a, a, a giant CD key. Yep. A everything mm -hmm. else is downloaded, right? So what do I have on the disc? I have maybe a shell of a game. I don't even know if it's playable if I installed it. So most P PS4 games are probably not playable if you install it raw without connecting online. So it's just a key, really. They they've already started that. the The natural progression is oh st streaming and, and whatnot now. We haven't d dipped totally in that pool of GeForce Now and Stadia and all that stuff. Like, I, I'm not willing to go into that where your game is entirely out of your hands and you're streaming it. So the digital stuff is the intermediate, but they were kind of forced into that anyway. Hell, I I got another copy of GTA V just so I didn't have to hmm. freaking hear my disk drive spin. Yeah, you know, know what's going to contribute to the death of media? That fucking loud-ass PS5 drive. That's what's going to contribute to <laughs> it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, but, but you're 100% right about that. It's like this generation or last generation, I should say, that was a generation that made me go, you know what? I'm done with the physical because it made no sense. I'm like, I'm installing the entire game into the hard drive. What is the point? And then it's like, I got to, you know, put a disc in, go to, you know, order a game from a store. It may get here late where I could just buy it and download it and you're done. You know, and I'm not, I understand there's some people who they like to resell their games. So that's great. I've never been, a, a game has to be very, very bad for me to resell it. Kills on Shadowfall and Knack. <laughs> those, <laughs> those are the last two games. I was like, yo, these games are trash. I don't want them in my house, you know? Um, but, but I generally don't resell games. So buying them digitally, it's just better for me. But in general, you've seen the trends. Like at the beginning of the generation, last generation, you know, it was like 20 ish percent of people bought digital and by the end it was like 70 ish percent 80 ish percent so and then with the rona that really sped shit up with the digital you know um a lot of games like like final fantasy um i was gonna say 13 final fantasy 7 remake that sold mostly digital you know yeah yeah so that's just the general trend so ps5 ps plus and xbox game pass they're not really contributing they're just part of that wave you know but here's the thing though I, I do want to bring this up just real quick because people keep saying the death of physical media Me physical media is gonna die. physical media is never going to die physical media or at least you know when it comes to games it's going to be i see it and i've said this before it's gonna be like vinyl records right there's going to be specialty stores probably like limited run games that are going to just have these versions available to people who want them so they're never going to go away they just won't be the dominant thing anymore like they used to be you know brian you're going to say something i mean it, it all um, oh, um, ahead, bro. I was about to say that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Um, physical games can't go away purely because there's always going to be that drive for it. 
especially in other markets. Because again, we always think of it from our markets, i.e. Western market, yeah. Uh, yeah, Western market. But then when you consider like other markets such as um, South America, Africa, e even, those guys probably don't even give a damn about digital. They just care about physical because physical is the only way that, that they can get these games. Mm -hmm. And plus, when they go over to like another country, they buy the game, they buy it physically. So that way they can just take it back to their console and play it. And also, that's how the market may even be there. So I think physical just can't go away. And in terms of the actual question itself, I really don't think that um, Game Pass and PS Plus um, will really do well. Have really done anything to um, lessen physical media? Because again, I think the biggest thing was the convenience factor of it all. Because how many times have you gone out there, like you went to a store, you got the game, and you went back home, you took it home, and you played it? Compared to, I just hop on the console, I hit a button, boom, the game's there, and it's on your disc, or it's on your drive, and that's it. It's like, the whole convenience factor is way better. I mean, how many times have you gone to a store, you tried to find a game, game's not in stock? Or you've had like wait in line to pre-order games, and just waiting for hours on end... Whereas these days, you can just be at home, you press one button, it's there. So I think that convenience factor is way more influential. Yeah, I agree. Manny, I you're think... gonna say, Manny, you are going to say something before? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's something I don't exactly think that Plus and, and Game Pass are going to be the things that, that all sort of kill everything. And I think it won't fully kill everything. Just, just depending on the factor of just... Within our own world, there are people that don't have a, a amazing internet, you know, just having that sort of thing. So, yeah, you just go over to the Walmart or you go over to the thing. I mean, I, I it, you, you go to, uh, you look at any of those stores right now, you know, even in our little, and what's going on right now, store shelves are empty, you know. Game section is, is like a desert because people have just been buying the, the hell out of games. Um, but you know, one, it, this is a, sort of a semi side note, but if you think about it, those old versions of games, at least on the new consoles have actually been, uh, you know, on the disc have actually been kind of a good thing because it also gives you an idea of what, the improvements that those, that those games can, have, have kind of gotten from having those unlocked frame rates. Like the last guardian runs at like 60 frames per second with no drops. Whereas on the four, it was running at thirty, barely. Yeah. You know, or Assassin's Creed, you know the the what was it the Syndicate? No, was it Syndicate or was it the other one before it? What was the other one? Unity. The, the, yeah, Unity. That game ran really well on the new consoles. Crazy. Which is hard to believe. Yeah, Carlos, you're gonna say something? Yeah. Um, I think uh, Brian was talking about there will always be a drive for uh, physical media. Well, I think the drive will die whenever the disk drive ceases to exist on these consoles. Oh, shit. Um, and well, they could I, do that. They could push the market in that direction. All they have to do is start making SKUs with no disk drive, and what I are you going to do about We already have the here, console variants that provide that, by the way. All right. You know? yeah. here, here, here's a funny thing. A, a guy on, on YouTube actually figured out, uh, found out that the PlayStation uh, 5 actually does read that there's an external disk drive connected to the console. So he stuck a Blu-ray, he stuck a Blu-ray, you know, essentially a Blu-ray um, thing in the console, and it saw the game on there, but it said that this, then it would, when he went onto it, it wouldn't play it or wouldn't install it from there. So ther theoretically, you could make a PlayStation 5 console or an Xbox um, um, Series X that doesn't include a disc. But if you still want to get, you know, just one SKU that doesn't have a disk drive, and you could just, if you want to invest in a Blu-ray drive, you can always do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, real quick aside, this is also uh, me plugging some stuff right here. This is how anti-physical uh, I am right now. Right? I got sent a copy of Immortal Phoenix Rising, physical copy, PS5. I refuse to play that thing on my console. So I'm going to give it away to you guys. So on Thursday, I'm giving that game away to somebody. So that's how Damn. bad. Yeah, I'm like, listen, I am not trying to fuck with this. After GTA, I'm like, nope, I am not ever touching 
physical again. I am totally. done. Like, I am done. <laughs> I am absolutely done with that shit. So yeah, stay tuned, people. On Thursday, we're going to give away a free physical copy of Immortal Phoenix Rising for the PS5. That's to, to, Tony has quite a bit of, of very interesting games. Yeah, you also have to give away giving... your Mortal Shell, I believe. But you know, we'll get to that when we get to that. Hey, what's um, up with all these Immortals? Yeah, <laughs> um, Chris, you're going to Mortal say Phoenix bro? Rising. <laughs> Chris, you're going to oh, say me? Bro? Yeah. Are you good? Oh, I was going to say that yeah. Brett would probably like that game. I heard it's very much like Breath of the Wild, the Phoenix Rising game. No weapon fragility, right? Mm. No, I don't think anybody does anything that retarded in the knockoffs. I think they <laughs> learned the that, that. That game, I'll probably play uh, like if when it's on sale because it, like I'm not trying to play another big giant 120 hour Ubisoft. Oh yeah, it's game. a big open like, world I'm, game. I'm good, yeah. you know. <laughs> like I'm, I'm kind of good on those for now, you know. Yeah. Um. All right, I think we're done with this topic, so let's move on. To the next one. By the way, you guys will notice because I took away the the scrolly stuff from under us, and so now I put the questions on there, and they look really good down there. They pop out. It is perfect. Oh, the Chirons, the Chirons, baby. All right, another question from Mister Logic Wins. All right, with the recently rumored Death Stranding Extended Edition coming to the PlayStation Five with new story content like place like Persona Five Royal and Xenoblade DE. Will remastered games with exclusive story content become the new DLC? Again, that Death Stranding thing is a rumor right now, so take that how you will. But he's right that we have we have been seeing remastered versions come with like extra content. So he wants to know is that going to be like a thing moving forward with like extended editions? Yeah, I think I think it's something that's always kind of happened. I mean, we've seen it with Game of yeah. the Year edition. Those things are essentially doing the same things. They're a lot of the DLCs just bundle in into the game and repackaged, and it's like, okay, we're selling it again. Um, yeah, I think this is something that's gonna keep going. It's a trend that's gonna. I mean, it, it's a money maker for a lot of these these people. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a, another GTA remastered a couple. <laughs> Like this year, probably. Well, we are. Yeah, they said it's coming this year. Remember, that was literally the first thing they announced during the PlayStation Five reveal. GTA Five is coming. Like, mm -hmm. All right, bro. And it's because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, you know, we're we're gonna have the the game. Like we already have the game on the PS Five. It's just a PS Four edition, and we're probably gonna. I, I don't know if it was a free upgrade or what it or or what it was, but I'm pretty sure that Rockstar and GTA, the GTA team, is gonna just repackage the the GTA Five for the PS5 edition. And it's going to be like, oh, it's going to come with all of this and all this that we already got as free DLC anyways, but it's going to be repackaged in a way where it's like they're selling you a, like a new experience. Yeah. You know, I should probably look at my Phoenix Rising box. Because remember, uh, like in the months coming to PlayStation 5, I was wondering like, how, what's going to, what are you going to see on the box? Is it going to say PS4 or is it going to say PS5? I don't know. What do they say? Like, okay, Assassin's Creed is on PS4. But they have PS5 boxes. But if you buy the game on PS5, will it run on your PS4? I'm assuming it will, right? Oh, the that's... one, no, the PS5 version, no, it no. But I mean, like, work. the physical disc is still just the PS4 version. You have to download the PS5 version, or am I just assuming that? You're no, using logic. You're when that. What happened, Brett? You're using logic. Oh, okay. I'm using so maybe I shouldn't use logic. <laughs> I don't not, know. Not not in this sense, man. Like use use greed. Think greed in this sense. Oh, there's, yeah, there's only two separate versions. Oh, of course, yeah. Because okay. if you if you buy one and then upgrade to PS5, they're gonna make you buy it again. Yeah. yeah. By by the way, Brett, is it sad that I instantly knew what you meant when you said use greed? I'm like, oh wait, sell you two versions. Yep. Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> they're not gonna they're not gonna lock that thing down. You're gonna if you if there's gonna be if I haven't actually seen very many shells because again, all the shells nowadays are all like empty. But for the most part, yeah. If you're, if you're gonna, if they usually sell you two versions: a four version and a five version. Um, and to be honest, yeah. By the way, no, no speculation. I just went to Amazon. Yep, you could buy the game separately on PS4 or separately on PS5, and, and yeah. Xbox Series X and Xbox One. So, yep, they're selling you two versions of the same game. What? What's? 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 What's, uh, what's weird about that? No, I'm just saying, like. I highly doubt there's a special PS5 version. You just download the fucking patch, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they're getting people because if somebody upgrades midway, they purchase the game, they might think they need to buy the other one. 
when yeah. they don't. You would, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's just the it's just the the visual of it saying it's for this console, but in reality, it's for both. It's for both. So it's, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. a marketing ploy. Yeah, that's all it is. See, that's well, that's why I tell people like you know you gotta consider. Think about the way these companies think, right? When you realize the way they operate, then these moves make sense. You know, when you come at it from greed, you know. But at the same time, you know, if you're if you're having to if you're having one version on the on the shelf, I think that is also freaking confusing. So yeah. they make it as stupid as simple as possible for the com- the regular consumer. Oh, hey, I got a PlayStation 5. That says 5 on it. Okay, I'm going to buy the one that says 5. Yeah, that's it. Not realizing that they're just buying the PS4 version. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Because when they pop in that disc, it's just going to download the PS5 version. But they're also going to have the PS4 version, too. Because remember, the game downloads twice, you know? Yeah, which is also another weird sort of thing, too. Yeah. So. I think that's like, when, when I went, to, yeah, when I went to my fucking hard drive, I was like, I was like, oh, hold on, I got a PS4 version of Miles Morales, of a fucking Assassin's Creed, and some other shit. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? It's crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, but but yeah, I, Carlos, you, this thing has been going on these extended editions with extra story content, so it's not really anything new. So yeah, you know, we'll see it going because it's it's been going. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a good way to re, it's a it's a good way to reintroduce a title into you know the public for those that just for some reason didn't get to play it when it came out. Yeah, pretty much. All right, that was simple enough. Let's move on. All right, Mister Black Metal Gamer. All right, by the way, I Black Metal Gamer is in the chat right now. What's going on, brother? Now, Black so- Metal, you know we love you, man. But sometimes you ask us the same question a bunch of times. Is uh you're a heavy drinker and you forget. <laughs> like one of Damn. His, yeah, like one of his <laughs> questions. And he knows, man. Fuck out of here. I'm not saying nothing surprising. I know. <laughs> um no. like one one of his questions was what gaming franchise needs to retire? This is the third time you've asked us that. We've answered you before though. Uh so but thankfully he asked an, a bonus question. So we're adding in your bonus questions. That means you got your two questions for the week, sir. So you are good to go. All right. So first question. Will GameStop benefit? Uh, do you think this GameStop stock fiasco will help or actually benefit GameStop in general as a business? Uh, we said this on Thursday. No, it won't in the long run. Uh, Chris, you could delve deeper into this. Will this actually help GameStop? Because I don't think it will at all. No, because the valuation was only based on on this stage run on it from the 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 Reddit guys, the the the, the retail and amateur investors. Wall Street like, bets, this right? isn't. Yeah. yeah, this isn't based on some kind of big news. Like GameStop didn't announce something. They didn't have some big revelation about their brick and mortar business or whatever. This was completely external, completely unrelated to them. They are they have been failing um, consistently quarter over quarter. Was, we've been talking about it on Throwdown for the last year and a half. They're constantly losing money. There's no um, <laughs> there's no uh, upside to this for them right this upside was just for uh kind of sticking it to the hedge funds and the the reddit guys making some money right you know so the, and that in that front that was exciting right but for gamestop this this means nothing like their valuation is is meaningless for their business nobody's going to invest in them because of this because there's nothing that they can offer but this but, does uh, this is this benefits them in no way except no way. it set their valuation to the moon. But that valuation is only based on completely external forces and is is being investigated eight ways from Sunday. So who knows what will happen afterward but, uh, next week? You know. But also here's another thing: like with all this 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 money that they sort of got, essentially this lifeline that they pretty much got. You think that it also probably gives them the means to survive a bit longer. Until things sort of, you know, get a little bit better and people are actually able to go to stores and stuff. Ah, but that's uh, where I think people are confused. You see, market capitalization does not uh, equal liquidity. There's a difference. Liquidity is um, is 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 holdings that the company has that they can spend. But your market capitalization is based on the value of your shares, which can change at any time, as we saw uh, mm-hmm. at one point last year. This time last year. Uh, GameStop was trading at two dollars and fifty-seven cents a share. They were at their lowest point ever. Literally, you could take out pocket money and buy GameStop shares, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, on uh, this Wednesday, it was up over four hundred dollars per share because these guys shot it up with the with the short squeeze they pulled on on um, Melvin Capital and those guys. They squeezed them on, on their short bets to force the stock to, to skyrocket, and it was only because the Nasdaq and these guys halted it, which I I kind of think is uh, illegal and shady the way they stopped the trading. That that valuation probably would have gone six hundred, seven hundred dollars, maybe more, which would have been unheard of, mm-hmm. uh, and they would have lost way more money. I mean, for every eleven dollars that the GameStop went up, these guys were losing about a billion dollars. Just think about that. But that that mm-hmm. valuation is just based on uh, that market capitalization is just based on on stock price. That's not liquidity. That's not money that you that GameStop can pull out and use to to do anything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's um, the difference. But one thing, a black metal gamer, he's in the chat right now. He's saying that he meant. You know, his question was meant as like, do you think this will get casuals interested in GameStop, go into the stores, buy the games, and then, you know, help the company out? That's a temporary thing, man. This thing's going to go away from the news cycle eventually. No, Then no yeah. one's going to care, you know? Yeah, this this will indu- uh, it, well, this will um, incite casual investors. Like, here's the thing. The, this was never about GameStop. This was about a corpse bleeding out on the ground and how many vultures could get to it first. And then the vultures got all got there, and there were too many of them, and they started a bidding war over a rotting cow carcass. It's more about power and who wins the bid, who wins the money, than the actual thing. Nobody wants GameStop. They're all looking for an excuse. I mean, the whole thing is designed to sell GameStop. It is, they're trying to make money by bailing on GameStop at the right time. And here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Even if that wasn't the case, with this incredible uh, increase in valuation, I virtually guarantee you everybody on that board just cashed out. They have no fu- they don't fucking care at all about the company anymore. So it's essentially leaderless at this point. I mean, right. I'm sure that I'm sure they have a leader there, but they're looking to transfer to another company or put as much money in their golden parachute as possible. That company is not even trying to function internally anymore. Yeah. So yeah, even if you get casuals coming into the store to buy more shit it's temporary man it's temporary you know um although it is crazy <laughs> my mom of all people she was like asking me like hey what's going on with gamestop because even the fucking spanish news is talking about it you know that's how mm-hmm. crazy it is but it's a temporary thing i guarantee you by the end of uh, february no one's going to be talking about that shit it's going to be over you know so <clears throat> to answer the question it it absolutely helps gamestop because they can just fucking sell out right now and <laughs> make all loads of money as compared to what what the hell they would have gotten if they got bankrupt which was their which is was the inevitability anyways so this this helped them but it, does, it but at the end of the day it's just a, a, a small pause on on the fact that this is a failing dying um, a dying uh, you know business yep. it's, it's just not going to last longer by the end my, of the generation my, GameStop won't be around i said it right now by the end my of my done. thing about it is that it, I hate that it has to end with them because they had such a monopoly on mm-hmm. on essentially on big on game on game stores, right? That mm-hmm. it end that essentially it all ends with them. So now it's just like okay, now we we have mom and pop stores, but even mom and pop stores are fucking getting fucked over by whatever's what's going on right now too. So it's yeah. like oh. you know, there's no win in this in this situation. I mean, other than the guys who who uh, who who essentially um, <laughs> put the little put the kibosh on those on those cre- on those uh, on those uh, you know those vo- those venture capital guys, <laughs> yeah. because that's that same shit is what killed so- Toys R Us. Like the same bullshit that those motherfuckers are pulling right now is what killed Toys R Us and a bunch of other companies because they're essentially betting on the fact that they're 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 gonna they're implode. Yeah, the, the whole idea is that they squeeze them so everything balloons, but then you, the, the part you don't hear a lot about in the news is then they sell everything immediately, causing the shares to plummet and the company to go bankrupt. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's how they're doing it. They're just trying to, you know, squeeze a little bit of li- a- a extra life out of it by saying, like, they're going to, you know, it's basically betting that they're going to have one last rallying cry before they die and that you can bet on that rallying cry and then bail out before the company dies. Or help the company die by bailing out depending on how much money you buy or how many shares you buy it's this is in no way good for gamestop in fact it's a it's the opposite it's indicative of an imminent death they're they're on the deathbed because that's what these companies do when they short they they hunt down companies that that's what these people do they hunt down companies 
that are on the verge of death that they can pick up for pennies on the dollar and then buy enough that it artificially inflates it and then sell it so that they make money. They create their own demand. It's kind of cheating the system. Every once in a while, another billionaire will notice them doing this and say, fuck you, and buy enough shares on top of that. That's like bidding zero on the price is right. Buying, doing the same thing, shorting the other person to short, right? So now the, the value of the original stock has gone up beyond what the first person um, can, can afford. So they've lost money. They have to sell their shares back, which means there's more activity going on. The stock price reflects that. And then the other guy bails out and makes more fucking money. It's, it's just about creating artificial demand. And all that happened here is a guy jumped on the back of somebody else's artificial demand. And then Reddit found out and everybody dogpiled it. They just did the exact same thing. Yeah. The only difference, it wasn't one people. It was like a bunch of people. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really curious how they're going to investigate this because like, what are you going to investigate? Like, Oh, well you, you can't, you can't coordinate that kind of move with that, with all these people. It's like, why hedge funds do it? Well, yeah. Hedge yeah, funds do it but... all the, time. <laughs> yeah the, the regular Joes didn't do anything different than hedge funds at all. They, they, there was they nothing illegal about nothing, it. Absolutely nothing illegal. The, the shit they're pulling now, like Robin hood, like I think that's fucking illegal. You know, sh- selling people shares against their I'm will. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it is. That's, that that's sounds illegal as fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know what law that breaks, but I'm sure that there is one. You, you know, shit. Well, no, I mean, you, you, yeah. Stopping well, people from trading, is- that sounds kind of illegal to me. In a free yeah. market, you know? Yeah. Well, the, well, the thing is that the, 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 there's no, the investigation is going to find it. Is it probably. You know, uh, they probably did everything the right way, unless that would mean that whatever uh, whatever those guys were running was an illegal operation. So whatever way that they look at this, it's going to look bad. Well, it's funny is when they lobbied for, um, uh, you know, free trading on Wall Street, no oversight, no restrictions. Like, oh, man, it's coming back to bite in the ass hardcore now because yeah. they they wrote the broken rules where everybody's just playing by them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, you're right. It, it's. It's something that should have probably been done. Something about something. This this something should have been done about this a long time ago to stop these sorts of oh, things. Oh yeah, but the, yeah, rich people aren't going to do anything about it. I think no, this they're going to. It's a lesson yeah. to all of us. Yeah. All yeah, right. If you, if you don't like something, fucking change it. There no, I mean, go. you use the use the one thing that we have that we have as individuals is uniting together toward a direction. It's not just. Like, hey, you know, we're gonna go go out in the streets and protest something. No, that doesn't really do anything. That doesn't make anybody hurt. What makes you hurt? Oh my god! Makes these big guys. What makes these big guys hurt is actually getting them where it really matters, and it's in their wallets. Yeah. Have you have you heard like some of the like the sheltered comments that are coming out of some of these billionaires? Like, we don't understand why this is happening. People love rich people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, you you have to look. People are compiling um, interviews from CNBC. There's comments. I heard one guy say like, "Oh, these people are buying our stocks," which was yes. the most entitled fucking thing I've heard in my life. Oh, the like, internet is searching for what shorts he's backing right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the the idea like they're crying for regulation. It's like you motherfuckers said you didn't want this shit regulated and it should be a free market. Then when the free market bites you in the ass, all of a sudden you want regulations. It's like no, you just don't want poor people to be able to invest and make some money. That's what that's what it is. Adam, what's going on, brother? Yo, yeah, hey, <laughs> woke him up. Yo, what's going on? Talking about them games, man. You already know. All right, so, um, let's move on to the next. Oh, one. speaking of game, I got some. I guess I got some breaking news, but it's big, somewhat news. So, uh, you know, two K Games doing the whole wrestling thing, and they took the year off. Well, today was the Royal Rumble, and they were backstage doing face scans. So oh, really, they, they, okay, they, they're back in the biz, so they're not using old scans. They're actually, I guess, it makes sense because you know this is a big Royal Rumble. You got thirty main women, thirty main men, and plus a bunch of. There's a lot of people in the back. Is what basically the point. So it just made sense. And there was reports that they were backstage taking uh, audio for the game from some of the wrestlers and doing face scans. Nice. So that's that's at least we know that's happening, right? They're doing something with that fucking game. Good stuff. Oh yeah. Oh man! All right, let us move on. To- One second into the show, and he's already. I gotta have I some. Gotta have it, man. All right, th- this is a funny question from Black Metal Gamer. 
Um, he goes, what, what are some redneck games that you enjoy? Games like Fishing or Buck Hunter. Well, what about the the ultimate redneck game, Redneck Rampage? Oh, Get off my land! Yeah, shit, I, I I love me some NASCAR. I'll, I'll make left turns all day long. I love that <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah, NASCAR, no, it's fun. It's fun. Well, if you think about it, Gran Turismo is a redneck game. It, no, not really, because they had all that European shit, you know. Nah, it's a redneck game. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't consider that a redneck game. They got too many European things. Rednecks don't like Europeans, you know. Yeah, we straight up NASCAR, like NASCAR racing. NASCAR, that's 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 hick shit, you know. Um, you already know my answer. No, out of here with that shit, you know. Big Buck Hunter, Varmint Hunter, shit like get out of here with that noise, man. You know, I remember. By the way, this is off topic, but it's still kind of on it. I was um on Twitter today, and I was like, you know, I I like I miss the days when. History Channel was about actual history. Now it's just Hicks doing stuff. Like that's every show: ice road <laughs> truckers, um, moonshiners, motherfuckers in Alaska and shit. I'm like, what was, what was it? The Learning Channel. Remember the TLC? That, TLC it used to be like that. And then they just went to Cake Boss and all that other all that shit. You know, yeah. the, I got 15 wives. Watch my life story type bullshit. Yeah, you know, I got 15 midget wives or you know yeah, crazy yeah, stuff yeah. like that. You know. <laughs> Like, yo, whatever happened to the actual educational shit? Like strange know? addictions. Yeah, hoarders. No, you know, that that, shit. See, that, see, the, but that's the thing that you know. It's it's it is you know, and I'm sure they got the most uh the most out of those because it's just like a bunch of people being crazy. It's it's re- reality show bullshit. Same yeah. stuff that's that, going on that's in the network. People like to see, you know, they you know they go based off of the numbers, and that's what people are tuning in to watch. And it's like shit. We got to make money too if that's what they want. 90 day fiance here we go right yeah, it'll be like it'll be like this like the TL, the new tlc version of this whole house would probably be like you know bob vila but he has like two wives and there's this drama and then the and then the, <laughs> the you know the the company the company that he got to to renovate the house um collapsed half the house you, you know it wouldn't be only about just the thing oh and his morning fight with his wife over coffee yeah exactly yeah, it'll be that. I'm, I'm still surprised the Bachelor and the Bachelor, right? Those type of shows are still going. People watch, people that, watch shit. that shit, man. It's crazy. What a waste of time. People still watch wrestling. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> action. You can't turn away from that. You, can you know, if they had some of that in the Bachelor, if let's say it was a fight at the end, like the girls just got to brawl it out, then maybe I'll tune in. But if it's just like I gave her rose and she loved that stuff. Isn't that what they, <laughs> they call wrestling? It's like redneck soap opera and shit. Oh, it's man soap opera. Oh, man soap. I, I heard it was redneck soap opera. I don't know. Um, it's hilarious. You, you were watching. Re- you were watching wrestling. You does that make you a redneck boy? Yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> you know. <laughs> go, go, take him down, Undertaker. Yeah. Undertaker. <laughs> but no, hey, listen, I'm not the one that came up with that name. That's what I, people have called it. You know, I have not called <laughs> I don't it that. Think I've ever heard of the redneck redneck soap opera. Oh yeah, I've heard that one before. Um, again, I didn't make it up. That's what people have said, you know. Um, Who are these people? Yeah, I don't really, I don't really consider it uh, like redneck stuff because you know, wrestling is kind of universal. I see it, you know. People like fighting. Is what? What you know? What is um wrestling? If they're, they're just PG gladiator games, you know. Yeah, people like I that shit. It's it's crazy. My timeline is just a whole bunch of white, black, Hispanic people talking about wrestling. Yeah, man. Well, our, 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 um, me and Adam's grandma still watches uh, wrestling every every week. Adam froze. Oh, he did. Oh, he's froze. Oh, oh, oh. We're talking about wrestling. You could handle oh, it. Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> shit is crazy. All right, uh, let us move on. To it's a PC it. crash, by the way. Uh, yeah, these things happen. Oh, it, did he text us? Yeah, he just texted yeah, us. Yeah, he just texted. Yeah, I'm just gonna perpetually look down now. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, there you go. Oh, now, now he's uh, all right. Now he's uh, uh loading. it's funny because he's not a wheel on my side, he's still like yeah, he's frozen. loading, he's loading now. All right, let's move on. Next question. This one is from John Christ. What is going on, man? He's back to asking some questions. So, now, this is something he's been tweeting a lot about. He's very upset about this. Um, uh, so he goes, what's this? Why do you believe Sony skimped on proper? Home theater support for Tempest 3D audio and HDMI 2.1 standard features prior to launch. The hardware has been around for longer. 
yet Xbox properly supports VRR, uh, variable refresh rate, object-based audio, etc. So he feels that Sony really dropped the ball hard when it comes to the audio, uh, you know, home theater audio, uh, you know, compared to Xbox. So what do you guys? Think? I have no idea about this. So uh, you know, I mean, it's more about this. Go ahead. It's funny because I think the the, the, the biggest concern they were with with audio is mostly the actual headphones like they put it seems like they put most of the effort into the headphone into the headphone of the you know the the virtual um what is it a uh, surround sound in the headphone yeah uh, the system thing yeah yeah i don't know about i don't know I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what why they didn't include a lot of the the home feature abilities but at the same time you know, if you think about it, Microsoft doesn't have the same sort of development on their uh, 3D sound. You put on headphones with their console, it sounds just normal stereo. So yeah, I, I think the reason why Microsoft used it is because it's currently existing technology. It's already out there, so it doesn't take that much to apply to it. Sony was actually putting sort of develop in, into something, something specific and new. So my <laughs> guess is that they just dropped one, you know, in for the other. Now, vari variable frame rates. Now, that's a different story. I don't know exactly why they would have done that with uh, with frame rates. Because they claim that an upcoming patch is going to install it, but who knows? Yeah, and I think that's... The PS5, that's... Everything, come, everything that's useful comes in a patch, like folders, VRR, the expandable M.2 <laughs> drive. If this yeah. console actually complete, if this console was a game, it'd be cyberpunk. Oh, 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 oh man! It's got a good point. Yeah, yeah. Point. All right, so we're switching oh, roles. Brett oh, and oh, oh, cyberpunk. Oh, man, paint that paint that console yellow. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's yeah. it's weird, man. It, they a lot of things are. It's lacking a lot of features, and it's a lot. And and like you mentioned, Brian mentioned, it's like. All, all coming in a patch later on. We haven't heard anything about the M M.2 freaking drive. I'm like, what? It's it's already been months. This shit, this shit, it's a drive there. With, you can't do anything. There's already things in the market that can support it. So, man, it's just weird. I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, but yeah, the, the whole thing with the, I, I agree with Manny. It's like they, they focused on the whole 3D audio stuff that they forgot to implement <laughs> like the, the basic features that a lot of other, you know, systems use. Um, I'm not too familiar with the, with those specific features. I don't think I've used them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I will give them credit though. Those, and I don't know, Chris, I was going to ask you if you've gotten your, your, your 3d pulse headsets, cause those things sound really good. I did. I haven't uh, used it yet. I, uh, I have to hook it up and use it. Maybe I use it with division. That'll be a good test. Hey, John, he John, just shut up. Yo, we're actually answering your question about the 3D audio, bro. <laughs> um, but we, I think we pretty much answered it. Again, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again, right? Sony has this thing when it comes to their consoles. It's like an RPG, right? You play the first installment. By the end of it, you're fucking jacked up, all leveled up. You got all your armor and shit. You're good to go. Then the sequel comes out, and they take all your shit away right that's mm -hmm. what happens with playstation every time right by the end of a console cycle they have all this dope shit inside the system and then when the next system comes out all that cool shit gets taken away and then they slowly give it back to you folders are coming i guarantee you that all that shit you want for playstation or even simple things like an easy way to turn off the console which you can't do you know it's like yeah. these things will come eventually but it's like we gotta, it's like an rbg we gotta start over from scratch which doesn't make any sense. I'm like, it's, it's this shit weird. is already it's there. Like, Just use it. You know, it's funny. It's almost, it's almost like they don't look at what they did before. Yeah, they, they, like yeah, they don't. They, have amnesia. The, they don't look at. They don't look at the the latest version of whatever their their previous operation system was and go, oh hey, okay, people seem to like all of this. So then we'll, we'll do this. We'll do something very similar, but with a, a you know, but a slicker. Yeah. Right. And you know, you know what's going to happen, or, right? Or stuff like that. You know what's going to happen, right? When, when they bring these things out. Oh, this feature has been highly requested by our fans, and we're happy to bring it back. I'm like, why'd you take it away? <laughs> why'd you take it away in the what? first place, bruh? It's hilarious. Sony, it's, it, man. It's, I don't know. I, I don't know. It just seems like, you know, for, for them, they were not like, I almost feel like they should have just delayed the damn thing because. Uh oh. 
they would have just if they would had a little bit more you know, a little bit more time in that sort of thing i that space i think it would have been a lot a lot better features and stuff like that but here's here's the fun stuff you don't hear anything about that on that xbox there things seems to be working pretty it's all the same damn thing. good it, yeah because they just kept all the shit they had before and just brought it over yeah. that's it yeah. you know <laughs> they literally just use the even the same the, ui the same ui it's uh, like fucking sony i don't know what the hell like they don't have all of it john they don't have any of those features that you're talking about vrr is one of the big big ones that people have been talking about the compatibility with m m.2 uh external drive um but their freaking biggest issue is that stupid ui that they implemented it's a fucking mess man yeah. it's horrible it's it i don't know what the hell they were thinking you were like, kind of gotta... crack with his smokings I get a very strong impression that my, uh, that Sony is just kind of like doing things that please the mass audience, but not doing those small little touches that make people like, I feel like they've been phasing those out slowly. And that's kind of the stuff I talk about when I'm like, they, I feel like a company gets lazier, the dominant company kind of sits on its haunches. Like it's just kind of phased out all those little things that made people love Sony as a brand. And I, I've come to think it doesn't even matter who it is. It's just who's on top. The person on bottom generally tries to in innovate harder. Um, so yeah, like yeah, it may be just a uh, like uh, like variable refresh rate, maybe like a common option and easy for Microsoft to to put in. But if that was the case, wouldn't it be easy for Sony to put in as well? So why didn't they? Well, I mean, so I, feel like, I feel like they already they felt like they. Uh, I'm not uh, you know not to you know make excuses, but I feel like they already feel like they felt like they had a solution to this already, whether it's. They, whether it's coming or whatever, it's, I feel like that that's part of the reason. But again, why wouldn't you have that on the launch date? Why wouldn't you have that as soon as the damn console comes out? Hey, look, you stick it to a stereo and it does uh, it does surround sound. Why is the very why isn't the there of why doesn't it support variable frame rates? Mm -hmm. You ask all these questions. Just mind your business, shit. <laughs> do what they gotta do. Yo, man, yo, man, call up Mark. Yo, yo, call up Mark Cerny and be like, "Yo, you didn't think about this shit, motherfucker." You know. Okay, go for it. Yeah. So, I think the whole thing with the headset audio is that they just wanted to push the headsets because. Is anything else supporting it apart from the headset? I actually have no idea. I'm just asking. Supporting what? Sorry. Like, does anything else support like the 3D audio thing that Sony has apart from the headset? Well, the the, the whole gimmick is any headset. Yeah, can any headset 3D does. Yes, yeah, anything. Anything, anything, you can, okay. anything can you connect to it does can, the 3D. Does sound. anybody know? All right, so. When I watched that first time they talked about it, even when they keep hyping it, they kept saying that all the tech for that 3D audio is in the controller. They were like, you play in the controller, and that's when you get it. But then you see these wireless ones, Astro and all the other ones, that they're wireless. And it says, oh, yeah, we support the 3D, and, and it sounds just as good. I'm like, how? It's You're not connected to the controller. Oh, I mean, no, they, I prob they probably, if it's in the controller, they're probably using their own... Um, version of whatever is in the controller well didn't they didn't they talk, didn't certainly talk about how they had this processor dedicated for audio in, in the conference yeah something I like think that i remember i mean that's in the it system was in the audio was like, that's why he was like oh yeah we put all this tech into it once you plug in you're gonna hear it and you can do all the adjustment he didn't mention anything about it being if supporting wireless headsets but mm. whatever but yeah it does, I don't know. it does support the the the, the sony wireless headset yeah, no, it supports it, but for three D audio, that special audio, he made it seem like it was all about the controller. No, no, the no, 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 it's not. It no, works it's, for, it's it works with any headset. Yeah. yeah, it works with any headset. And it's not special. Then, then it's bullshit. It's a gimmick. <laughs> well, I mean, it's probably it's probably an evolution of what they've been doing as far as three D sound initially. I mean, you could um, years ago, well, like for me, I used to own a pair of uh, of surround sound headphones that I used on my PlayStation Three. You know, you use the what is it, the optical port, and you stick it to there, and you can get uh, you can get a, a, a virtual surround. It it reprocesses the surround sound system that usually goes through your um through your stereo. So it's probably some sort of evolution of that. Probably taking advantage of you know like um you know like what is it a uh, hearing um you know uh, like thinking you know, like how how the ears work 
kind of like the way Senyo Sacrifice also has a sure. version of that, but without sure. actually using any sort of um, what is it? Using any sort of actual um, you know, uh, uh, you know, processors like you know, you know, right. what's her face talking in your ear and all that stuff. Well, speaking of ear, they never sent me that email or any of us Jeez. that email. Remember where you were supposed to send a a, a mold a of, your, of ear? your fucking well, ear? Well, they just well, dropped they, that they, idea. Pull well, that wax they, into they, my ear. They actually do. They actually do have a version of that, and I, I I don't know how I know this because I'm a I don't even own a five. But there's three. There's in there three um, different um, hear, uh, ear types that you can sort of choose from to to um, make a better experience inside of that thing. There's the audio settings, but it's not the ear mode. Remember, they were like, oh, no, no, I mean, mode and said it. that was a possibility. That wasn't like you. He wouldn't want you to do that. I think that. The, yeah, they're them simplifying that is choosing the di like a, a different type of mode or ear type that, that you have within their system. Unless you have weird ears like Vulcan ears, <laughs> don't work. <laughs> Crazy. All right, let's move on. Next question. Also, for Mr. John Christ. All right. Do you believe sticking to a vision like Sony does compared to Microsoft's ask and feel approach helps or hinders either platform long term? Interesting question. Could you read that again? Yeah. Do you believe sticking to a vision like Sony does compare to Microsoft's ask and feel approach helps or hinders either platform long term? In the feel approach. Yeah, I don't want to John, you're I mean, in the you're in the room. Can you explain this one to us? Um because no, I'm thinking I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking I'm guessing my, yeah, I think it makes sense. I guess he's saying that it's it seems like a Microsoft is sort of asking, you know, hey guys, what do you want? As opposed to Sony where sticking Sony to a formula, yeah, sticking to a formula. Yeah. Microsoft is more like reactionary to the to the crowd, to their to their fans. It's like, okay, so we did something, the fans got mad, or the, the fans wanted something else, so they reacted and they're like, oh, let's change it then. Kind of like you know the price, <laughs> the price issue is hmm. like, you know, they raised Always up the price, the fans were like, fuck you, and they're like, okay, we'll go, we'll go back. Shit, I remember, I remember that, that Sony hack they kept trying to do that shit. Remember? They're like, oh, yeah, what do you want? We're going to help you out. We're going to give you plus, and we're going to do this and that. They, they were doing all that shit. And then once they got on top, they're like, all right, let's disconnect that phone number. Hmm. Well, yeah, because you yeah. want to make your customers happy at the time because they're already fucking pissed off their out, of, out of their minds because their fucking data and all their probably credit card information been spread all over the fucking internet. But you know, I mean, uh, uh, we're, we can't actually be at, like. That's a good thing. That's kind of undeniable, right? I mean, here's the thing: there's there's two types of camps. There's there's a reactionary camp, and then there's also having a vision. I feel like you can you can fall into a, a, a pit of danger on either side if you don't make any sort of solid decisions. Then you won't make any sort of real decisions. Just waiting for people to say to get to give negative commentary and then just making a decision based off of that. That doesn't always equal up to a good experience. But also at the same time, it's like there's the other side of that where you're so dead set in the direction that you're running, you're not you're you have the blinders on and you're not even paying attention to who's what 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 is saying being said around you. It needs to be both. It can't be one or just the other. I had Nintendo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Nintendo's like yeah. the epitome of like you're gonna. This is what we're gonna give you. You're gonna fucking like it or not, motherfucker. N N Nintendo exactly. is the epitome of to the top of the the top of the crown. They don't even have voice chat. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about VRR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are asking, probably asking for that shit all over the place. Yeah, we got that. Use your cell phone. <laughs> no 4K either. <laughs> while we're at no it, no 4K, none of that stuff. Again, price the. Is a, the, you don't need to be the most powerful console to be the most successful. No, Just you don't. Saying. Yeah. You can you can be a janky piece of shit like the Switch. If you got some good ass <laughs> games, but if you got some good ass games, it don't matter. Or you just, or you have a extremely rabid fan base that helps too. You know, I feel like it's it's a it's been a little a little bit like of cult. Oh, yeah, it's just like that. Yeah, it is it is very cultish and, and a lot. It yeah, seems it's very a cult. Cultish yeah, a Nintendo fans are weird, man. But Except it, it's when those weird... motherfuckers let me down with a Wii U. Fuck oh. them. So hey, except oh. except Piggy Dan. We like him. He's cool. You know? I mean, Piggy but Dan's I mean, a shit. Piggy but Dan's yeah. the man. Yeah. I think I think it's a little bit of a column A, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You can't have you can't just be one or just the other because 
I, you know, again, like I feel like Microsoft is listening right now because they don't have anything. Yo, Microsoft, and if they, what's up? If they don't, if they, if, if, if they. If they start causing any waves and start pissing people off with them not actually having any games on the field, you know, get in any pieces on the field, it's going to negatively affect them. So what I feel like they're doing is they're keeping as low as a profile as possible, you know, giving you the good news, downplaying the bad news, listening to you when they listening to you when they when the, when they, when they do stoop when when what we believe. The big come the big part of Microsoft starts making dumbass decisions like doubling the price of fucking uh, games with gold. Yeah, they, they rolled that back real quick. They rolled that back real fucking quick. So I feel like that that that's what they're sort of doing. And I'm I'm sure I'm I'm I'm, I'm sure that they will you know Spencer or them said what the fuck is listen we ain't got shit out there stop we can't do shit like this. How about we wait into, until we actually have some fucking games out, and then we start talking about uh, raising the price of of of, lo- of of gold? Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Um, yeah, and this, yeah. yeah, right. Anything yeah. else you guys want to say about um, you know, the, you know, Sony and Microsoft's different approaches? Nope, I am I am with Manny there. Like, you need a good balance of both because yeah. you go too far in one way, you. You end up like with 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 no idea where you're going, or you end up with a diehard plan and no one likes it. So you need a balance. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, uh, let's move on. Next question. This one is from Mob Hits. First question: Who, here. who him? Um, if you were to retire from gaming, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. If you were to retire from gaming, what would be your final game? What would be the last game you played until you were done with gaming? So if this was the last game you ever played in your life, what would it be? Well, that's easy. <laughs> uh, Agent. Uh, Agent. I was going well, to say I finished Cyberpunk. Oh, do you? So here, so here's the here's the part where we get like too we think too deep into it. Like, is this a game that already came out? A game that? What do you mean? We you mean you, motherfucker? I don't think what is about this shit. I got my answer already. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's all yeah. collective here. Um, so it's like, is it a game that already came out? A game that's about to come out? Maybe a game that Anything, was announced? Whatever you want, bro. Okay. Star, Star Citizen, you know. <laughs> oh shit! <sighs> By the way, my answer is Metal Gear Solid Three. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go on in a bang. The greatest game of all time. So there, that's my answer. Adam, what's your Division Twelve? Twelve. <laughs> By that point, it'll be out, and then I'll play it and. Everybody else will probably be dead. Maybe I'll be the last one alive, and then I'll be talking a bunch of news. I've been playing this since the first one. They were like, you know what? We're blocking you. We're like, fuck you. And then I just <laughs> disconnect my shit. Off my lawn. That's it. And uh, there won't be a Sony or an Xbox there. It'll probably be like Sanyo or some fucking weird ass company. Fucking the Ouya you know? too. You know, <laughs> Ouya gets rebranded by some other company. Got tons of money that becomes the number one console, and I'm playing on a Ouya. You know, the Ouya X. The Ouya X. Oh, by the way, shout, shout yeah. out to John, John Christ for subscribing. Man. Yeah, man, appreciate Thanks, that, man. brother. You already know Throwdowns giving you that good stuff. All right, Manny, last game yeah. you'll ever play. Uh, last game I'd ever play. I mean, probably would go back, you know, to the early stuff. Uh, maybe game, uh, the game. original, the original, the original Metal Gear, nice. uh, the NES, just to kind of go back to go back to the roots. The roots. <laughs> All right, um, Mr. Carlos. So I'm assuming I'm not going to die right after I beat this game. No, no, you're so. still going to be alive, bro. <laughs> you're still going to be alive. It's yeah. going to be in my yeah, head. You really so you're thinking this shit. Well, you know, I I got to take these questions seriously. Yeah. Um, I, I'll okay. I I won't play an old game because why the fuck do I want to play an old game? Um, uh, I already beat it. All right, it's the experience is not going to be topped by what I first experienced if I loved it. Like I'm pretty sure if I play Mass Effect two again, which is my favorite game of all time, it's not going to be as good of an experience as it was when I first. Yeah, it'll played be it. better. Well, I mean, we'll see about the remaster. You have the chip planted in your head, and you can project the image. Yeah, PlayStation Nine. So, 
so, so, so I'll just say I'll just say Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. Ah, very nice. All right, um, Brett. Last game you ever played? Portal Three. Portal Three, <laughs> nice. Damn, that would be a good one. You know? I mean, yeah, well, also it's never coming out, so I'd be immortal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, you're still gonna die, bro. <laughs> Not until Portal Three comes out. Make it. Um, Brian, and don't say Star Citizen Two. It's a tough one. And, and don't say Deep Down. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he did say the agent before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, in all seriousness, last game to play before I retire. So, it has to be something that I wouldn't mind just saying, okay, I had a good run. So, it has to be either my favorite game of all time or a game that. I really like to play. And Carlos already brought up the idea that it can't be something I've already played before because it won't be the same as the first time. So hence I'll get like a slightly lesser experience. So it's a basically I'm 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 trying to think of an answer while vamping at the same time, which is yeah. really quite difficult. I can come back to you <laughs> if you need time, bro. Um I think I'll I think just have to play it safe. Uh GTA San Andreas. Oh nice. Nope. Okay. It's a nice game, has tons of replay value. Story's really fun to play, nice twists and turns. So I think that will be it. Nice, all right. And Chris? Well, I guess I could retire now because I got my Demon Souls remake, so I'm, yeah. got, I'm done. All right, I'm done, everyone. Good done. night. Yeah, that's it. He's done. He's done. Oh, wego. I'm leaving the industry. <laughs> I the the wego, industry. I'm done. I'm done. I, I left the industry. <laughs> I left the industry. <laughs> um, by the way, Mob Hits also asked us, um, you know, what games do we wish never existed? We've answered that before in the past, bro. So leave that out of there. All right. Uh, let us move on to the next question. This one is from. Well, did I get my shit right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mob Hits. One more time. Say it again. Show the monkey. All right. One of the best things that came out of the Resident Evil 8 demo was the 3D audio. What game can you see blowing your mind that can use this type of game immersion? So I guess... Oh, that's an easy one. All right, which one? Uh, Hellblade 2? Yeah. Oh, duh. yeah, yeah. I was... Great mm -hmm. minds, man. Great minds. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right, what about the rest of you guys? What upcoming, Yo, game, what, what, what what, upcoming game do you think is going to have, like, bomb-ass audio? Yo, know, the one, um, the, I call it not Dead Space. The one that we saw, the the Sony thing, that's Dead Space, but it's not Dead Space. I don't remember the, the name of it. One, yeah, yeah. The horror game. Mm -hmm. Shit, I don't remember. But that that shit looks. I'm like, oh, that is Dead Space. That uh, that would be awesome. That's right. Dude. And doesn't it have some Dead Space developers working on it? Too? Yes, it's, it's a guy yeah. who made Dead Space. Yeah, the, the, it's basically the, the visceral, visceral guys. Visceral yeah. Guys. yeah. Give me that shit. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Um, pretty much any horror game is good for that, for like, you know, immersive audio and shit. I think or, or, or Call of Duty is always the, good. Call of Duty. The shooting and the war. And you mean the that ain't horror? In the background. Yeah. The yeah, screaming. Yeah, running around. They're like, my leg, my leg. You're like, oh shit, gotta keep going. Well, my I, bad. Adam's I'll... answer to anything is Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty. Duty. <laughs> call the Duty. Shots to the face. All right. Any any other answers? Hell, send you a sacrifice too. That's a great one. Now, That's a good one. Um, they made a a new Eternal Darkness, but um, that's kind of my answer to everything. I, I gotta say, I, I feel like this thing's only gonna be used on horror games. Well, I mean, you can say you can or use horror it games for will best utilize it. Or yeah. sneaking game, or you know, a sneaking. I can, I can game see like a good case for like racing games, like in the cockpit view. You know, you, you have like all the sound of the cars like buzzing around you. Yeah, I can see that. That's true. Well, you guys have been playing three D sound games now. You know, Demon Souls has got it. It's right? really good. You could you could hear these motherfuckers breathing. You know, it's like oh, yeah, you hear them breathing and stuff. Yeah. It's eerie, so I think horror games can take most advantage of it, but I see fun games using it, too. I mean, I look, I'm looking forward to um, Ratchet and Clank, so oh, let's see what it, be it good, does yeah. with that. You know, yeah, well, you can actually game. you actually hear uh, Clank behind your head. <laughs> yeah, it'll actually sound like he's behind Yeah, you. what if he talks to you while you're doing shit? Right. Hey, hey, Ratchet. How's it going? Good. 
<laughs> My bad impression of Clank sounds like yeah, you reboot. sound more like Bentley or not Bentley, the turtle from um Sly Cooper. You sounded more like that, him. That, 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 hey, hey, that is Bentley. That is Bentley. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Ratchet, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, that's Bentley. And the other was <laughs> the Murray. Murray. Yo, by the way, yo, Jim Ryan, where's uh, Sly Cooper, man? Yo, what's up Come with on. that, Ben? Like, we tried to make a movie, but it didn't happen, so we're not no, going no to movie, make a new game. Nobody wants a movie. <laughs> yeah. Play that game. Man. Kristen says, remember how Sly Cooper would play a faint sound if a hidden bottle was around? I always like when games do that. It's like, oh, wait, I hear a little something. It's a secret around here. You know, I always like when games do that but, shit. Uh, when uh, Jossie was playing the game and she didn't have the little, you know, the little map to try to tell you where... The thing where you turn off the music of the game and just listen to where the bottles are coming yeah, from. Yeah, just sort good. of find them that way. It's a good so strategy, you know, man. Mm-hmm. You had a headset plugged in. The the guy that would talk to you, the the rich dude that was telling you what to do, he would say different little things and tips and tricks. He's like, I think there's some guys around the corner and, and other creepy shit. You know, but you only heard that if you plugged the headset into the, the controller. If you didn't have that, if you were just using your TV speakers, you never heard it. It's kind of like um, no more, no more heroes, where they had the talking in the controller. Where you had to put the controller up to your head and be like, it'd be like Travis, you need to go into the world fighting all the, 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 the. like. She'd say all kinds of crazy, uh, crazy shit on the controller. Do you? That's right on the Wii remote. Yeah, it's kind of mm. like a phone. All right. I don't really know many upcoming games, so um, I don't know, but. Yeah, Resident Evil would be a good one for sure. Resident Evil. All right, moving on. Four. This one is from Roman Ronan in the house. Roman. Oh, this this Roman, one kind of tied, yeah, kind of tied to Resident Evil here. All right, Capcom started out this decade strong, or last decade strong, with its most profitable year ever. Oh, no, he's talking about this decade, 2020s, yeah. Uh, Capcom started off this decade strong with its most profitable year ever, building off of high, highly rated games over the last couple of years. Do, did you think Capcom would come back as strong as it has? Is it surprising that Resident Evil and Monster Hunter were the franchises that pushed the success? Resident Evil, no, because Resident Evil 5 is actually still their best-selling game, I believe. Um, but Monster Hunter fucking came out and just blew everybody up really? the water. Um, I think Monster Hunter Hunter World's their best-selling game ever. It is not. It is not. Yeah, Resident Evil Five was it for a long time. Um, But yeah, yeah, Monster Hunter World. You're right, Chris. And by the way, Iceborne. Remember, Iceborne is a fucking DLC. Seven million. Yeah, Yeah. it's crazy, man. So um, no, I you know, and here's the thing. I love me some motherfucking Capcom. That was my favorite company in the '90s, straight up. Right, but they fell off. You know, in the 2000s and shit, they, they fell off hard. Um, you know, fucking Bionic Commando. We didn't know we're talking about that. Fighting games. Yeah, but so, but last gen, they came back strong. Like, you know, they came out with a lot of good shit. The only thing I will say this, right? Capcom, you almost man, ninety percent there, right? You came back. You not only did they bring back a bunch of like old games that we love, remastered and all that. They brought it back to a bunch of new stuff, but they have not like came back with the main thing they've known for fighting games, right? Street Fighter V was fucked up. I know I know it's a really good state right now, but it was a bad launch. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, trash. I'm not even mincing my words about that. Trash, trash, trash. From beginning to end, trash, right? So if Capcom gets that part right, fighting games, they, they, who the fuck is making all that noise? Damn, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> you know? Um... But yeah, Capcom, that's the only thing, because like Resident Evil came back strong. A bunch of their, like, they, they brought back a bunch of their old arcade games and shit. They remastered a bunch of the, you know, like, they did so well. You know, they just need that. They just need they the fighting need to games. They fix the fighting, it. and they need to fix Bion on a Commando. No, they, they don't. Up when they did that last one with the dreads. Or they need to well, they, go back they, they, redeemed, they redeemed themselves with the 2D Bion and Commandos. Yeah, know, yeah so when really they did, did the Redux and stuff for remakes. But bring it back first. Bring another one. Bring yeah. a new one. Uh, you, you, don't, you, don't need, you don't need to bring that back. Just yeah. give that but, one time. But like we said before, because we've talked about this in the past, Capcom does also still need to bring more new IPs. I think they're, they're, we're finally going to be getting some this this generation. But, you know, because they kind of had to reset everything by bringing back their old games, and everybody loved those. But now we need some more new shit, you know? What's the last new one? I just keep thinking Dead Rising. I don't know what what was the last new IP that they created. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damn. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, come I, out. So. I used to uh, think that the last out, one but... was was Dead Rising when that came out. I was like, oh shit, what is they this? They must have oh, come out with can... something. At, they had to have think. something. But everything uh, they had, it feels like it was sequels and remakes. That's Dragon's Dogma? That, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I guess so. Um, but yeah, oh, 2012. Damn. But no, I, I, I kind of didn't see. Actually, I'm going to keep it real. I kind of was not really pessimistic, but I was kind of not hopeful about Japanese games in general starting last generation, right? Because the PS3 era, it, it was abysmal with Japanese games. It was because they were just trying so hard to be like Western games, right? So Capcom rode the wave of Japanese games resurgence. If you guys remember the last episode of last year, um, when we were talking about what are what do we think were the biggest stories of the of the generation, my story was the resurgence of Japan, right? Sega came back hard. Platinum Games was you know pushing things through the entire time. Like all these Japanese games and, and IPs just sprang up and, and did very very well. So Capcom rode that wave. So I didn't think Japanese games were going to be coming back. Period. So you know I, I'm very glad to see that. Like I, I'm looking at not my shelf anymore. I don't buy physical games, but if I look through my game collection, a lot of Japanese games now. It wasn't like that for a while. It's just Western games. You know, which is very, very hurtful because it's like, yo, Japanese games are supposed to be the shit. You know, the, the Western games are supposed to be the secondary, you know. So, they, you know, Capcom just rode that wave and very happy to see that. Um, you have any idea how old you sound right now? What happened? They said we, we all sound so old right now. Well, you, I mean, we are a bunch of old guys. That's what we do around here. This, this is one of the things I love about throwing out. We provide a service to these uh, cats. Perspective, you know. Listen up, young bloods. That's it. Yeah, you motherfuckers don't know, man. If it wasn't for Japan, we wouldn't be gaming right now. You know. Yeah. Did you guys? Did you guys know in the audience that Square and Enix used to be different companies? <laughs> right. Yeah. It used yeah. To be two oh, yeah. Companies. Oh. Did you guys know that Sega used to make their own consoles back in the day? Well, that's, I, I got. Yeah, I got a. So you said Capcom was your favorite company of the nineties. Yes. More than Sega. Um, ooh. ooh, that was a tough one. Yeah, believe it or not, yeah, believe it or not, they yeah. made a console. Yeah, if, if, if Capcom had a console, I would have bought that shit. <laughs> you know, well, think about it, Carlos. Why do you think I bought all those Sega consoles? Because they had the best versions of the Capcom games. You know, Saturn. That's nobody true. was touching fucking the, the their ports of the us of Capcom games. They were almost not all the time. Some people say they were arcade perfect. They weren't arcade perfect, but they were fucking close. You know, PlayStation was trash for fighting games, man. Um, for 2D fighting, it was terrible. You know, um, if you wanted, terrible. yeah, terrible. If you wanted some real shit, you had to buy a Saturn, you know. Um, but yeah, Capcom was fucking the truth. Um, and they, om they almost caught, caught back the old feel, man. You just got to bring back the fighting games. Hey, yo, Tony, while we're on the subject. Yes. I don't remember Sony, um, like when th th we had the first PlayStation, I don't remember them being known for big cinematic first party games but i for the life of me can't figure out what they were known for uh ma they were mascot games um you know crash bandicoot all that type of shit you know twist the metal remember the fucking clown that was a mascot too you know okay yeah. so they kind of sprang out of the ashes of the n64 that makes sense not the ashes well, of n64 no. <laughs> they, they 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 sprang from <laughs> they sprang from the ashes of the failed nintendo deal you know there we go that's that's what i wanted to say yeah, the I mean, ashes of the Nintendo disc. And here's the thing. Sony did what Sega did as far as like the attitude and just took it to the next level, right? So it say, and Sony smartly said, Hey, you know what? Games, they're for everybody. You you play your you know, you play games in your world, then you go back to doing your own thing. You know, it wasn't like like a kitty thing. So they, they helped elevate it and not yeah, too. Yeah, because so so Sega was sort of trying to hit the um, more older, like they, they weren't the older markets, you know, you know, uh, young young adults, you know, teenagers, not just little kitty games. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so they started so, the casual console. Yeah, they, so, they kind of so, did start that. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah I mean, remember it, the whole tagline like li "Live in your world, play in ours." That was their whole tagline for the PlayStation One. Yeah, they were they were for the for the working adult. So, uh, but is, and then you look at all the titles that they had originally. They had, you know, Mortal Kombat. Was it three? That they had, that was a, was it was a launch one, and that was uh, they Kombat, had games believe, like, yeah, yeah, they had games like Loaded and Reloaded, the Twisted Metal games. You know, those sorts of things. Yeah. Um. All right. I think we we'll move on. But yeah, shout out to Capcom, man. 
All right. Oh, Capcom. Capcom. Bye bye. All right. Oh shit. I think I don't think I have my Chiron here, but you know. And I think. Oh, by the way, Pragmata. Um, that's going to be a new Capcom IP. So there you go, Adam. Oh, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll oh, see. Oh, you think? Hey, hey, maybe another deep down, right? It might be Did another you... deep down. They're announcing games before they even start them. Yeah. Do you guys ever think that Capcom? I mean, I know that they they went down for a while. And they're starting to make good games again. But do you ever think they could reach their stride like they did in the heyday? No, I don't Possible. think any company can, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I got some money. I think it's money. Because the nostalgia will always override whatever new shit is there, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, like, like back in the day, Capcom was a heavy hitter in the industry. Now they're, let's be honest, not. No, oh, they, no, no. Actually, no, no, Brad, I see what you're saying. No, they actually are back bigger than ever. They're making way more money now than they did before. So, yeah. But it they, also, so, yeah, but they it's have, also the, yeah. But it's also, it's also the fact that there's more players playing now than yeah. there was. Like Monster sure. Hunter alone made, made them one okay, of the Okay, Monster biggest. Hunter was made by a sub company of that. It's still like, Capcom, it was, dude. You can't it, dismiss it does. that. It, no, no, no. Know? It does. It does. But I'm just, I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to give me something else, too, not just Monster Hunter. Okay, Resident Evil. <laughs> there you go. They have, been, they have been killing it with Resident Evil. Yeah, there you go. Those two alone, man, they, they, they're one and, of the big players, you know? Um, they so made Capcom, so, yeah, it's, it's not like they can reach a Haiti. They've actually surpassed their Haiti as for in terms of money, you know. Well, in terms of money, said, but not no in players. terms of franchises. No, no, not in terms of franchise. They've they've definitely consolidated just the, some core yeah. franchises that sell. It's still Tony, the everybody's making more money now. Money's worth more money. Yeah, yeah that, that, that that's. Uh, not to call you specifically out, but like I have that people make that argument to me all the time. Like, oh, it's, uh, it's one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Like, yeah, movies, everything makes more because of inflation alone. But that's but, not just to say like I increasing audience too. So, but like, yes, yeah, so that's worth saying. The audience is that there's a lot more people playing games than there was in the in the original heyday so, of the yeah. Capcom so they title. have over they have overcome their heyday in, in terms. I'm of talking, those, let's, yeah. let, let's talk at market percentage. Yeah, like you're moving the goalposts right now, bro. <laughs> Just saying, you know. No, no, no. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, like back in the day, they were like one of five, ten companies that basically dominated and ruled the gaming kingdom. You know, they were, they were fucking House Lannister, like. Now they feel like a second tier studio that still produces really quality stuff, but really leans on. And uh, yeah, I, I, if I put both of them in, like yeah, they're they're doing really well. But like otherwise, they're just the mon they're, they're just the uh, Resident Evil studio. Yeah, but think about it. What's Rockstar now? They're just the GTA studio. You know, a lot. No, of, they are. Rockstar's yeah. gone down in my book because of that. Yeah, but but again, I, I they're really making honestly... the most fucking money they've ever made. You know, so yeah, I guess it depends they on are. what you're looking for. Um, but, but they don't. I don't but in general, Brett, you notice that from a lot of companies, they're not they're not releasing a ton of varied games. They're releasing a lot of the same type of games. Even Ubisoft, they have like five big franchises. They're all the same game, basically. You know? Yeah, this is this is true. I'm trying to think of anybody who doesn't follow that rule. No, they all Trouble. do. They all do. You know? The sad the sad thing about it all is because now the the expectation of these games is so high. Now the only surefire thing to do. Kind of like Hollywood is to re is is to release recognizable titles back yeah. from back in the day when things didn't cost in in stupidly expensive uh, prices to to actually create them. Yeah. So by that regard, Capcom is not doing anything different than the other big guys are doing, focusing on two or three big titles. They're not doing anything different. Okay, so maybe I should be ranking them up there with Ubisoft. You should be because. They're up there with Ubisoft. They are. All right. Well, you you successfully changed my mind. Thank there you for go. the discussion. All right. Good they stuff. They jerked off and they go. Thank you for your candor, sir. They go with something <laughs> different that's not good. Then you end up with like a Nickelback situation with uh, Roadrunner Records. We Remember, don't talk about that these, fucking band. That's what I'm saying. They had all these great bands, and then there was Nickelback in there. And I'm like, is that is that correct? Is yeah, that, that, yeah, that yeah. was like like this. One of these things is not like the other. Exactly. You know? I was like, why'd they do that? They tried to, you know diverse and that, that didn't work out but yeah think about it even a prog band like dream theater fits into roadrunner better than nickelback you know because they're at least yeah. heavy you know nickelback's trash anyways move on then uh, that's when the fans go well, I love yeah, nickelback. i'll say all the trash nickelback is trash and i will defend that to my dying breath i don't care who <laughs> says i will i will die on that hill fuck nickelback, that man. Man. Man, 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 man. <laughs> 
in his limits? He's talking about breaking into his girl's house and raping her. Wait, and what? Let's move on, man. Jesus Christ. Wait, All right. Um, okay. This show this, contains some dark content. Yeah, that, that's Your what discretion we is advised. This that's is why, why we got is, that intro. That's why we got that intro, man. All right. Um, be, um, besides video and besides video and music streaming services, are there any other apps you think would be interesting if they were available on consoles? Here's his example. With GameStop and the markets in the news, I found myself wondering how a stock trading app could look in a console environment. Just a random thought, maybe Comixology or another e-reader type service. So, yeah, what other kind of off out of the left field apps would you like to see on a console that you think could actually kind of fit on a console? Like, you know, the stock market. Yeah, if you imagine that, like, play Call of Duty and then trade some stocks. I don't want to see other fucking apps. There's too many fucking apps. <laughs> oh. Stop it with the oh, fucking app. Go you literally have, to have, you have, to have a, thousand, a thousand different apps for every single portion of your fucking life. Stop it. I don't want to have a goddamn app. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it, yeah. you fucking kids. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I agree with with me well a web browser the just because i had it before but i agree with manny it's like why do you need to trade stocks on your console you could trade stocks on your phone and your yeah, yeah. computer or you could call up on the phone you could call your broker why do you need it on your console besides kids play on your console what if your kid fires up the td ameritrade app and decides to sell all your <laughs> shit while he's playing fortnite because you grounded him like hey, what if you have oh. a good gaming session you see a little pop-up notification you just lost everything it's like oh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, you lost the match and you lost your livelihood. Hold on. <laughs> but, what if, but what if you want to play games but don't want to miss when the Redditors stop holding? <laughs> oh, man. Um, turn, on, turn on your phone. You know, put, a, put an alert on your you, phone. Yo, you can have, have notifications on the TV. I, you, of course you can have it on your phone. Like You can have you have Netflix on your phone, too. I think good have you have multiple. Although, here's the thing that I fucking need to see. I want to see a Discord-type overlay where you can have little windows like you guys are all seeing with your friends in it so that you can do video chat. And I don't even want this for me. I want this for all the fucking Fortnite play at high schoolers because you know it's a good idea. These days, we're too separate. Any any way to bring community together, I, I, I approve of. And I think a lot of people play these Fortnite games because of the you know, social aspect where they can just get together with their friends after school. Fuck, like, you can, you can like, video chat with your guild or whatever. They, they, the... Communication services on both consoles are fucking abysmal when you compare it to the standalone things that we have. It's a bandwidth thing. They probably figured it's too much, and they don't want to be taxing. So I can, I can rock my, I can rock a fucking Discord and a game on my PC. This is not generally a problem there. I mean, yeah, maybe even drop down your quality a little bit, but having you know six video feeds, I think would be good for them as a company. Remember, uh, and I say this because. The reason the first Xbox really took off so well, one of the many reasons, was it was very social. It had four controller ports. It encouraged you to get together with your friends and play video games. Mm -hmm. Some of the best memories that I have. I think it's some of the best memories a lot of us have. And being divided the way we are, and even in a fucking pandemic, feel closer to your friends and actually feel like you're all hanging out in a room, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know why there's not the ability, like, you can watch people play games and talk to them, you should be able to just have an overlay over whatever video game you're playing. It shrinks it down a little bit and p puts boxes around the bottom of the screen. Maybe the maybe the bottom and the right side or something like that. I don't fucking know. But I, I know none of us would use it. So that's why I'm specifying this isn't for me and this isn't for people like us. But so many people congregate in video games. And I think one of the best things about video games is the community. And it, how very, how, you know, despite being toxic and shitty to each other sometimes... A lot of times we're really pretty fucking close. So I, I think supporting that in any way is, is good for not even necessarily the industry, but for gamers, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm generally, I'm with Manny on this one. Stop with the apps on consoles. I just want to play games. That's it. Uh, I don't care about all the other shit. You know, makes no fucking sense. I mean, I, like, I, like, I, like, I don't care about Spotify. I know a lot of people use that thing. I'm like, I don't. Yeah, I got Spotify another... on my phone. How good, you know? It's I, another. I got this. I got another, another application yeah. to log into. Put your email in there. You ever think about how many uh, how many apps and things that you were logged into and you forgot about? Yeah. The, you know, or you have you have names. I don't know. I just. 
Some How do you sort have of. Spotify on your console if it doesn't sync? Like, and again, I'm going to talk about the Xbox One. This is pure coincidence. But remember when you could load songs into your console on the Xbox and yeah. actually play them in game instead of the game music? It's we have this with Spotify. Why is Spotify a channel in GTA? Why? Mm. Well, it's because but the Spotify, can but Spotify can literally uh, overlap all of your soundtrack. Yeah, on the current one, on four and five. Yeah, yeah. The the game soundtrack or just the game, playing it overlap? The game overlap? Soundtrack. The game no, soundtrack. it it, it disables. It's just like the way the 360 does it. The PS4 it didn't do that, but on the PS5 it does. I was playing the Tony Hawk the one and two on my PS5 with my Spotify, and it I can still hear all the sound effects and stuff, but all the in game music been muted. It just automatically mutes oh, it. And, yeah, you brought it back. Oh yeah. shit. Okay, brought it back. learning something and being happy. Yeah, that that was awesome when I realized that. I was like, oh shit, look at that, it works. Yes, okay, Wait. finally, thank God. Games need to take advantage of this shit, because I haven't seen it enough. Unless it's just a, a feature you can do across all games, and I don't know why more but people are talking to do about it. Isn't it system-wide? I thought it wasn't per game, I thought it was system-wide. <laughs> what? It is, I don't the, know why people are, more, more people aren't talking about overlaying it. Overlaying your Spotify feature. or whatever over the in-game music. Isn't yeah, that a system I, feature? It's yeah, a system feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you don't need to worry about the game doing it. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah you don't, exactly. You don't have to go. Like before, you on the PS4, you would have to go into the game and mute the in-game audio so that way you be like, it just doesn't detect it. Or it'll just play both soundtracks. It'll just, you know, it'll be annoying. But what they should do is, uh, like, especially like with the wrestling game or any other UFC, whatever, if you're creating a character and you're doing entrance on the 360, in those days, you could actually select the track that you had loaded on your, your hard drive. It'll be cool if you can link Spotify and then just select any track that, you know, from Spotify. So that way when your guy comes down, he could be coming down to freaking who knows, whatever you pick. That'd be cool if they just had that integration as opposed to always hearing the same five tracks that they have for generic wrestler one to five, you know? To play the game. So, that'd be cool. Time to play the game! Time right? to play the game! Yeah, he didn't come out tonight. That's pretty good. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't come out with new apps. Don't come out with new apps. And better uses for them. I want to see something playing randomly from my Netflix on a TV and game. Why not? Start doing weird is... shit to tie it to reality. I know this isn't specific to the question, but I would add a voice, uh, voice chat app on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> nice. Good that work. sounds like a good idea. Why haven't they done that yet? Bring back that uh, Netflix feature where we could all sit, like the science theater. Remember mystery where science theater, the, yeah. yeah. Mystery science theater where you're in the, the room and you could just bring that feature back. That was fun. Go to watch movies with a bunch of people and you had your little avatar at the bottom. You know, sitting there watching them. Draw the PlayStation home. By the way, um, like perfect. the Oculus has a game like that or a feature like that where you're watching a movie with your headset on, your buddy has a headset on, and he's actually sitting next to you and shit. You can look at each other. That's creepy. Yeah. That's so, creepy. So you could do that too if you want. <laughs> can you think about it? Like, wait, do they have to be next to you? Next to you? Like, let's no, say they don't have to. They can sit wherever they want in the theater. It's a big open theater. No, but I mean, oh, so, but like, let's say if you're, all right, let's say if that's the case, and then you're just, you know, chilling at home watching, and you think you're in this big open air, and then all of a sudden you look over and you see somebody in the back staring at you. And yeah, but you know your friend is in there. You already would have pre-done this. Like, oh, hey, you hop in have my game. To know. Yeah, you're like, hey, hop in, my, they... hop in my game. And you're like, okay, cool. You know? So, yeah. <laughs> and then you look back and he's like right next to you. Yeah, he's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tony. Yeah, no, that would become this game of like stalking your friend in the movie theater. Yeah. That's crazy. All right, man. I'm sorry, Manny. Go ahead. Go ahead, Manny. No, yeah, you like essentially make your own little horror movie. You essentially appear behind the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's all I would do with it. But like, I, I do want to ask you: Home did suck, but if they made a home that didn't suck, is anybody other than me interested, Adam? Yeah, why not? Nobody. I'll go with it. Yeah, M Manny. What about you? You're a big home guy. I mean, I like. I mean, I go into it every so often. I thought it was an interesting idea, but at the same time, there was absolutely nothing to do in the world of PlayStation Home. None of the stuff oh, yeah, ran. No, what... None of the stuff ran good. Like you know, like if you if you did, they did have a movie theater that you could sit down and watch things in. But the but buffering in that shit was horrible. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. Like if they managed to do it correctly, I'd be on board. Don't don't bring back that awkward monstrosity that you had. Mm -hmm. I think it was begging to be killed. But like, yeah, it was a good concept. 
I always kind of liked the idea. Um, Expecting my for a second, like what was going with. Well, it's not. It's not even that. Like so, back in the nineties, where they still didn't know what they couldn't decide what format every PC should be in, but it was also Windows based. I had this desktop. Uh, from it came with the computer that my parents had bought, and it was basically like you logged in. And you were in a living room, and there was like a library off to the side that like had a shelf with like computer games and shit. From the living room, you could still see like uh, the games that were on the shelf, and it was kind of like a point and click. Like you point and click and move around. And so like you drop in the office, you could drop into the arcade, you could drop into the library where all your storage stuff was. It, it organized things th- thematically, and it was actually a really kind of cool experience. You toggle it off and just go straight to Windows, but I actually really liked like popping in and being like, okay, so I'm going to go to the living room and uh, do some some media stuff, or am I going to go into the arcade and do some uh, video gaming or some PC gaming? Um, I, I I thought it was a really cool concept, and then they came out with PlayStation Home, which was kind of the same idea, but now you had an avatar. You can decorate a little apartment to show like all the swag that you fucking get from dominating games, like. Can you imagine how many fucking, like, Tony's little apartment thing would be tripped out? And, like, instead of just looking at a list of trophies, you could walk through a room full of, like, an actual trophy. They promised that shit. trophy room. (laughs) Yeah. They promised that shit, you know? They promised it, but... Fucking Phil Harrison, man. Yeah, hey. They could could make all the trophies. Another... But but again, it's like, like, what are you going to do? You're going to go into, you know, this virtual world, walk around for a little bit, and then what? You know what but, I'm saying? Uh, okay, so this is the thing. Like, let's, say we're all getting together to, let's say we're all getting together to play Monster Hunter, right? We all jump into Tony's apartment, and you know he's like, hey, dude, check out my trophies. Instead of seeing a list, you see the vastness of all the trophies that he's acquired. And not all of them are like cups. Some of them are like, you know, the Platinums, each developer can like, you know, like make a different thing, you know, golden cross guns for fucking Uncharted or a boar's head or something. Or yeah, but after seeing it for the first time, I was first just about to say that. That novelty's going to wear off real quick. No, they, I know. I know. They do like, like the Oasis from Ready Player <laughs> we're, One. Remember we're on our fifth playthrough. It's like, look at my trophies. Yeah, like, look at my trophies. Yeah. It's like, no, shut up. And this is play Monster Hunter already. You know? Man, I, no, 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 man, no, I, no. Yo, man, I, I can't see your trophies. I haven't loaded up yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me, let me put it like this. Let, let him finish. Go ahead. Brad, go ahead. Okay, if we all want to launch a game right now together, like if we all want to launch Monster Hunter together, we already have to drop into a menu. We already have to talk, drop into a room. All I'm talking about is putting graphics on top. It, it's not more obtrusive than things already are. So everybody jumps in Tony's living room, does whatever. Like, and in these things, you know, in these games, like you have know, fucking like Pac Man and Centipede and all kinds of little mini arcade games and shit like that. So people could just fuck around until. Everybody jumps into Tony's living room, and then boom, Tony launches uh, uh, Monster Hunter, and it goes right into it. Like, we don't have to cut through menus. We don't have to group up. We don't have to do anything kind of like Xbox. It just fucking throws you right into the game together. Like, I would like that. I don't want to have to do that on top of other things. I want to be able to do that instead of other things. So, like, yeah, we could open a window and then just, you know, do an audio chat kind of thing or stare at a blue screen or... Pop into Tony's room and be like, "Dude, I never saw this before. Like, when did you do this?" I just think it's a it's an alternative that doesn't need to be forced on people, but I think it's a cool alternative, and it doesn't need to make the things that you do uh, different. It doesn't you, like you, you like I said, you still just jump into a room, or if you're talking to somebody like and your game's not on, you're just sitting there on audio. Like, po- it pops you into their fucking apartment. But most of the time, like, yeah, just be like a place to gather and then fucking jump off from there. We still do things analog these days. You know, everything's cards and text and things like that. Doesn't need to be. I think I think Brett is just wanting to fulfill his fantasy of of showing his settlement building to other people. <laughs> you shut your whore mouth because you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Uh, yeah, come come. Everybody group up in my, my Fallout settlement. We'll fucking jump into Division or something like that. Like, yeah, why not? There you go. All right, man. Let's move on. I believe we are on the final question of the night. This one's fun. I uh, I and mean, I'm allowing a third question for Mr. Logic Wins because this one's good. All right. Ooh. What are your thoughts on Torrance Davis, you know, our mentor, our collective mentor here, what are your thoughts on Torrance Davis officially retiring from games journalism? All right, for context, a little bit of context for you guys who are new and um, just about what Torrance did. So 
Throwdown originally started on the site Shut the Fuck Up Play. That's where we originated, and that site was started by Torrance Davis, who's been in the industry since 1995, right? So he released the final video, the, the finale, I should say, of Good Morning Gamer, his kind of vlog. And he just, you know, gave praise to all the people that, that came up with him, you know, and just talked about that, you know, he was like, I'm 50 years old, I want to move on, all this other stuff. And it was a really good video, but... I, I've known Torrance for like almost nine years. This motherfucker says he's leaving. He'll be back because he's done it before, you know? So Torrance yeah. like, all right, bro, that's cool that you're doing that. Take your little break away from gaming. But we both know you coming back, brother. We both know you're coming back. You always come back, you know? It's in his blood, man. Yep, it is <laughs> in his blood. He can't, he can't help it. So, I mean, Torrance, so I say to you, friend, Take your time off. Do what you need to do. He wants to do more photography, more uh, bass fishing and shit. Do your thing. But you know you're coming back to gaming. He's he's always gonna have one foot in. I'm, I'm sure he's I mean, explore other other possibilities. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing that he just wants to sort of totally just wipe the wipe the, the wipe the floor, you know, wipe the the what do they call it the play field, or whatever it's it was. Clean. Yeah, clean the sleep, clean the slate. When officially. You don't need to be that drastic about it. I mean, you know, here's the thing. Again, like you say, he's he'll be back, but he won't be back in the way we think, right? I don't think he's gonna just like kind of how he he's he has his his essentially his little his pinky toe, you know, stuck in the water just a little bit, you know. Talk about it, you know, talk, see the new things that are coming out. But I think, I think, but then again, like. I think Torrance doing the coverage and all that sort of stuff. I don't think that every single time it sorts of that sort of crops up. If you ever notice that he sort of like pulls away from it again, like you know he's being a little bit more involved with the coalition now. He did some stuff with CES, and then it seemed like he got those old feelings again. Like oh no, ah, stop it. Yeah, that's what you he know? said in his video. Like he was getting all these like press emails and stuff, and he was like, it just kind of brought back. Uh, the aspect of the industry he didn't like, you know, he, he doesn't need, if he's going to the, the, if he's going to do the, he doesn't need to be in the, in the industry in that way. He could just be a guy that's sort of reacting to it. Kind of like the way he's always been, you know, I feel like that's a lot simpler from he's not, I don't think torrent old torrents doing the old grind running out to E3 that torrents is gone, but I definitely think that he, I don't think he needs to just close the door on it all. Yeah. I think he'll still be around. I, I agree. I, I think, you know, and Torrance, I know you're listening, man. I think the step is a little too over dramatic, just being real right now. Because Torrance, you don't even put out that many morning gamers to begin with. You do one morning gamer maybe once or twice a month. You can still keep doing that, you know? Yeah. Once you or know? twice a month, that yeah. could be every, you know, whatever, every three months, don't matter. Yeah. I'm I mean, not saying that you shouldn't, I'm not saying you shouldn't go, but again, you know, part of the reason why we closed down, uh, why STFA Women Play was closed down, was because you wanted to pursue those things in your life, you know, those those interests that you have. So I would say, like, the biggest part of all of this, Torrance, is actually taking that step, going into that zone that's that that is not exactly safe. So yeah. I mean, you've been saying that you want to do the things that you want to do. You want to do your music. It's been ten years now. I don't really do it. Yeah, exactly, Torrance. And I'm going to say, video games are not taking up that much of your time, man. You know, it, oh, I, I don't think video games are it. Dude, I know where it comes from, though. Like, I, I'm i constantly in, in touch with my clients, so it makes it difficult to get out of, you know, quote-unquote ta tattoo life. And you, you start to enter this point where you're having this low-grade anxiety because you just, you know you're kind of on call. You know something's going to happen. You know you know that there's work ahead of you. And I know that that's always the case, but there comes a point where it starts to create more anxiety. Like, you know, just like looking through those emails, be like, God damn it. This is a fucking chore. Now I need to organize all this shit. I'm not looking forward to any of this. I he totally should have, he should have, he should have never jumped into that side of uh, in that, into that side. He should have just, I, he should, you know, like, uh, you know, he, I think he sort of when when, when the whole coalition thing came along, I think he want he, he jumped into that whole coverage, reviewing things, all that sort of stuff, which is the key reason why he 
closed down STFU in play, other than you know mm-hmm. also you know keeping his um you know wanting to do the, his uh, pursue his own things. But I think the biggest the biggest part of this is not you don't you don't need to be a part of it that way. You could just show up every so often, you know, you know, like the like the Yeti and say what's perfect, up. Okay, the perfect sub perfect segue. <laughs> Uh, my advice to Torrance, if you are listening, <clears throat> you don't need to be an active agent anymore. You don't need to be out there doing interviews and doing reviews and doing all this stuff as official business because that puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, but I would say, I think you've you've evolved beyond that. You've been in the industry long enough and you know enough people um, that you slash he is you're more of an icon you're more of a personality and uh, you know personality takes a lot of that pressure off because you just react to stuff you feel like reacting to um so i i think it's it's uh, my advice would be to start you know thinking more like a, a personality in the sense of like angry joe or something like that like you don't even have to none of these guys uh nobody posts regularly forever um but there are some people that kind of hang out the wings that when stuff happens, they pop out, give their two cents and then turn on, you know, mute their Twitter and, and, and bail. And you always have that option. I know a lot of people would miss Torrance if, if he completely bailed out of the industry. Yeah, for sure. By the way, Brett, did you know he had a nickname for you? He calls you uh, Brett the Bet Murdoch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what he called you on his video. He was giving all the shout outs. He gave you a shout out. He's like, Brett the Bet Murdoch. I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> nice, I'll take it. You know, um, but yeah, that, that's my thing. It's like I, I think you're right. It's like Torrance. You know, he when he feels that kind of like um, pressure to be responsible or whatever, he's like, ah, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah, you don't have to. Just do whatever you want, man. You know, like because again, that whole gaming thing is in his blood. I say, do it when the yeah. itch when the itch gets you. You know, you, you don't feel mm-hmm. obligated to do any of this shit. That that's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know, you you let us worry about that shit. You do your own thing. You know. Yeah. You know. And again, the door is always open. If he ever got anything to say about about what's going on in the current game, because I know he's gonna have some shit. You know, you're you're in constantly talking to him on the chat. You know, uh, I'm talking to him every single day, man. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even a matter of like the door's open. Like I could literally pull him. And like, Torrance, you're, you're gonna you're gonna be on throw down this week. He's never said no. He's never said no. Whenever I, I asked them on, you know, <laughs> well, it's a no pressure situation. I yeah, think that's, he just, just put himself in a lot of those, man. Yeah, that, I think that's what it's like. He just needs to stop doing that. Like, just do it your own pace, brother. Do it at your own pace. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. He, a piece of advice uh, from somebody who's younger and more inexperienced in life than than you, Torrance. Um, <laughs> I got really burnt out in tattooing for a while. Because I just spent so much time trying to, to lean or, or fulfill the expectations other people had of me. I really started having fun when I just went like, you know what? I'm going to make my own schedule. I'm going to take a tattoo a day. So I can really focus on what I'm doing, enjoy myself, and have time to breathe. So that I don't feel like my soul's being sucked out. Man, like I started loving it so much more again. Um, you only have so much juice. It can suck a lot out of you, but if you only give it a little bit, pretty nice. That's it. All right. So yeah, sh- Torrance, man. Uh, good luck to you, man. But I, yeah, I agree, Manny. Stop talking about it, bro. Be about it, man. Get yeah, on that horse. We'll miss you, but we all know that that's like when Wolverine dies. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, get on it, Torrance. Get on it. Do man. that shit. Do that shit. Write that book. Make that music. Spin That's, that wheel. You know no <laughs> Do everything, man. <laughs> man, oh. you got you you, you, got, you got your boy hip hop gamer right there. Homeboy got his own studio. Go in the studio. Yeah, Do right. that shit. No stranger to danger. You know. Stranger to danger. And Torrance, he's definitely one of those guys, man. Like he left the world better place than he came into it as. You know, he brought up a lot of people. You know, if it wasn't for Torrance, you probably would not have heard of me, you guys listening right now. You wouldn't have heard of Hip Hop Gamer, Andrea Renee, a bunch of people, all because of Torrance, you know? So he definitely did his part. Even um, you know, he even if a lot of people don't know who Torrance is, like he's made a big impact. You know, so shout out to Torrance, man. He's been behind the scenes too, and that's kind of a cool thing. Like yeah, yeah a lot of people don't know who he is, but he's he knows the people and he's got the experience and everything like that. Like, man, just Every once in a while, like it's just cool hearing hearing him talk, kind of freeform, and just you know not picking his brain because you don't have the chance to do that necessarily. But like, um, 
just hearing his wisdom from some this man that's been around and lived life. It's it's cool. Yeah. I, I think I think he knows we missed that too much. Of course, yeah, he'll be back, man. Because he, he again, even in the video he put out, he says he loves hearing stories of how people have heard him throughout the years and how you know he's positively impacted their lives. So he knows he know he's very aware of it, you know. But um, he just needs to you know take a step back for himself, and that's all right. Everybody needs that. All right, uh, we're about to wrap up a couple of things before we leave. So, you know, Throwdown, we're mostly a podcast, you know, but sometimes we do some game streams. So we're going to start that this week. We're going back to the division. Um, Adam, me and Chris, uh, Uh because they're 4K60. So we're going to jump into that. So starting Tuesday, we're going to be streaming. It's going to be fun, you know. Maybe we'll bring my cousin back from the from the, you know because he left me like fuck this stream because that was the that was our squad you know uh, for a while so that's going to be happening back, he would he would have to get warlords because remember he he left before that yeah he have to get warlords yeah but that's going to be cool playing that game at four K sixty so. hey wait did he get a PS five did he get no nah, no nah, not yet he wasn't able to secure one unfortunately you know by the way I find it kind of so, like so that was up. So that means you, can you can you bring along a PS4 guy with your your five? Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah, right. yeah, it's, right. it's, yeah, it's fine. Um, kind of interesting how that works, but yeah, get a boost. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Um. Manny, you got anything to plug? Um. Let's see. What do we got? Um. Just came out. Um. Last week was the the Immortal Wonder Woman number one, uh, starring uh you know Diana Prince and Nubia which is a book that I've been doing. Um, and we have one more issue as part of the future state, you know, initiative or whatever you want to call it. So I just finished that. So that's coming out um, probably this month, you know, like next month you know, or this month, February. This month now, yeah. Yeah, we're this month, February, February now, yeah. February. So, yeah, so that, that's coming out soon. And then there's a bunch of other things. We got some, we got, there's a, there's a project that, that that that's kind of fun coming. I can't tell you what it is, but, it's something that I haven't worked on in, in 10 years. So in 2012, hint, hint, that's around the time when I when I first worked on this. So it's kind of fun to kind of come back again and to do some work with that. So, yeah, mm, let's stay tuned for that. Sounds very magical. All right, Adam, <laughs> what do you got, Benny? Anything to plug? Uh, no, nothing yet. You know, it's still early. Once February, mid-February, a lot more stuff will be happening, but nothing right now. There you go, man. Um, by the way, um, a little bit of a plug. I, I am currently working on a new article for laptop bag about something we talked about tonight, uh, PS five features we want, you know, that are missing. So that'll be fun, you know, and also got a big, big article that's finally coming out. So I'm not going to talk about that right now. You'll hear about it on Twitter and I'll talk about it more on Thursday. Huge fucking article for your boy. You know, I submitted it last month, but now it's going to be coming out. So yeah, impact baby. Let's go. So that's it for us, people. So make sure you follow us on the Twitch and Twitters. Subscribe on YouTube and join our Discord. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, you know, and you like what you what you saw, smash that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. By the way, apparently oh, shit. you have to tell people that. I, I I was on Twitter the other day and I asked a bunch of content creators, like, yeah, do it. Or like, and then some people were saying, like, yeah, you know, sometimes I forget, but then when when the when the person says to do it, I do it. I'm like, really? That works? Okay. Don't do it at the end, though. Don't do yeah, it at the end. At the end, that's why I do it at the end. Like, I hate it, when people do yeah. it at the beginning. I was like, uh, it's I like, bro, I don't need. I, I don't I, know. Yeah, I've seen you for ten seconds, bro. Don't tell me that shit. But yeah, if you've been hanging out for the last hour and a half on YouTube and you've liked the the show, you know it helps us out, man. Subscribe, you know, throw down, you know, and we got yep. the clips for you too, you know. And to- oh, Tony's takes are gonna go to another level, but you guys will hear about that later. You know, um, anyway, for those, those listening, you can find us on literally any podcast app, like anything. We're on Spotify. We're on fucking Apple. We're on Amazon, you know, everywhere. Google, all that shit. Google. Even, we're even on podcast apps I've never even heard about. I'm not even being facetious. That's just true. I've seen some like, well, we're on this shit. OK, whatever. You know, so any podcast app, <laughs> throw down show, baby. And of course, uh, visit throw down show dot com. That's our audio boom page and you see list of many of our past episodes not all of them but most of them all the ones that count for the past year and links to everything mm-hmm. down below people all right once again our show is tony polanco by the way torrance i've known you for nine fucking years man you can't pronounce my last name right tony polanco 
bruh. You got to say what that with Polipanko? that. Polipanko? Yeah, Polanco. I'm like, yo, you got to say with that flavor, brother. Polanco. You know, that's how you say Polanco. it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Tony Polanco. And tonight I was joined by Emilio Lopez. See you later, guys. Chris Seely. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. Bye. Brett Murdoch. <laughs> Joe Torrance, you get that picture soon. <laughs> there you go. Adam Vale. Good week, everybody. And Brian Monjoma. Yeah, Torrance. Write a book. Apparently, it's not that hard, according to some people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, people. We'll see you on Thursday. Later. Later, guys. This is...